Senior Director, Honeywell. Hey, good afternoon. Good afternoon. You know, before I joined this industry and before I came to Honeywell, Honeywell to me was a manufacturer of thermostats, control systems. And, and we are, in fact. Making these practical products is at the core of who we are. And, but there's more as well. And as we've leaned into this idea of digital transformation, we are building software platforms, AI, ML, the ability to ingest enormous amounts of data, organize these data, compare against digital twins. It's, it's extraordinary, extraordinary technology. But really, it's when this extraordinary technology is applied to a practical use case is when it becomes incredibly valuable. It's when that thermostat is tied to that AI ML platform that it's transformed. And it truly becomes something more than that sensor and the controller. And it becomes a node in a smart building or a smart city. And its value is multiplied. I see 5G in the same way. In that 5G is this incredible technology. It's the ability to gather enormous amounts of data and move it quickly to be able to connect thousands or millions of devices at the same time and guarantee a quality of service, quality of experience, uh, and do it securely and flexibly. I love it. And uh, you know, honestly, if I was a better engineer, I'd probably be in a lab someplace working on it. But instead, I talk to customers. And, and, and as I talk to the customers, I'm impressed that how true it is that customers don't buy the underlying technology. They buy the technology's application, and they buy the solution. And I'm sure this is the case in every industry and across every market segment, but it is certainly and it is particularly true in the industry and the defense markets where I, I spend most of my time. And, and the leaders in these industries, and by industry I'm talking about oil and gas and warehouses, and, uh, logistics, flight lines, and Air Force bases, and, military facilities. The leaders in these sectors are incredibly practical. And they need to see a return on their investment for any bit of infrastructure that they build. And so if they're going to be building and installing a private 5G network, there needs to be a reason for them to do it. A warehouse leader may not be so interested in a uh, press release from having developed and deployed a new 5G uh, uh, proof of concept. Instead, it needs to see an actual return on that investment and the efficiency gain. And it's the same story in the defense market. The military commander needs to see an actual operational result. You know, I spend most of my time talking to military folks, and there's some incredibly visionary leaders. There are program offices whose entire goal is to bring the top technology from industry and bring it in and operationalize it. And it's possible to find a proof of concept, to go and build something. But that proof of concept must be aimed toward scaling toward production. It needs to actually be able to be deliverable and be operationally useful. And so ultimately, this extraordinary technology has to be practical. Now, this isn't intended to be like an architecture uh, diagram or any sort of uh, comprehensive list of product lines or focus areas for Honeywell. Rather, it's a simple slide that's intended to make a very simple point. And, and it's that we see this private 5G network as this infrastructure, this foundation that's holding up a variety of practical use cases. And, and how do we know that these are practical use cases? Because we're already building them. We're already deploying them. These are already being sold and delivering value to our customers. But like that thermostat, these useful, these practical applications can be transformed. They can be taken to that next level with this extraordinary technology that's supporting them. And as we look at how are we going to make this 5G technology practical, one of the things that we initially approached is this idea that we need to be able to deliver something that has value using the technology and the applications that are available now. And, and, and one simple way to do that is by having that common infrastructure that's supporting 
all these multiple use cases. As it may exist right now, asset tracking, for example, a track and trace programs, may be built off of a, on top of a Bluetooth network. Uh, uh, the asset performance management might be on LTE or Wi-Fi, certainly worker performance and augmented reality solutions on Wi-Fi. And so bringing all of these various applications together with that one common 5G infrastructure supporting it with a common da data fabric, right there you're able to increase the security and able to minimize the complexity of the management for the, the customer and be able to deliver real value. And that's not even before you get into the idea of being able to share data between these different applications or be able to even take advantage of any of the capabilities that this 5G network brings. And one question that people often ask me is, when you talk to these customers, what is that one silver bullet application, the one thing that a 5G network can do for them that they can't get anywhere else that's gonna justify the cost of that, net that network infrastructure? And it's a difficult, difficult question to answer. Um, and, and, and not because there isn't that incredible use case. You know, if I were to, to guess, I, I think it's gonna be location-based services. I think the ability to precisely position something is th that right there is gonna be enough to justify any investment in building that network. But many of those capabilities aren't available today. And so as a industry, as a practical company, we're faced with the choice of how do we sell this and make this practical using the applications that are available today? And one of the ways that we can do this is by looking at these applications in the aggregate. So instead of having a single application and try to justify all that investment on that very expensive 5G network infrastructure, how about we bring multiple applications in all at the same time and tie them together? And then that investment begins to make a little bit more sense and you start having like a very reasonable value proposition. And then you're not discussing it as an individual application except and now you're approaching this as building a digital depot, that connected warehouse or the flight line of the future. It's a major uh, uh, move in the, in, in the defense industry. It's how do you tie all these things together and how do you have that one infrastructure that's supporting all these applications that are done today? And raising the value proposition by discussing the benefit is half of this equation. The other half is the cost. When the competition with these very practical uh, uh, customers is Wi-Fi. And Wi-Fi doesn't deliver all of the capability that cellular does. They were missing out on their mobility. They don't have the security. They don't have uh, uh, the, st the stability. But if an access point on the 5G side might cost $10,000 and a Wi-Fi router is some fraction of that, we have to really discuss what the value proposition is on the upside. And so it's really important for us to ensure that as we're building and developing these solutions that we get these costs of the 5G network down as much as we can. And this is particularly true on the device side as well. The IIoT standards for the reduced capability, that one's gonna be huge. The minute we can have a $3 sensor hooked up to a cheap modem, and it's not a $3 sensor hooked up to a $300 modem, we can really make this, this value proposition make sense. And we can go ahead and bring these uh, solutions out to our customers, both in industry and defense. You know, I, I like the tagline of the future is what we make it, in large part because I feel like everyone here in this room and in this industry has been building this future for years. And now we're really at the cusp of being able to bring this thing into reality. These capabilities are available now, and we can actually have a compelling, practical deployment for these private cellular networks now, and using the applications that we already have that we can build. And so as we're looking at bringing out those moonshot, those wonderful applications that only 5G can do, I think what we're gonna find is that's coming, absolutely coming. But if we can get a future, and a very near future, where you have private 5G networks in every warehouse, every factory, every Air Force base, every Army facility in the world, those outstandingly compelling use cases will start emerging. And not from POC, but there will be existent 
actually out there in production. That's the future that I like, and uh, you know, uh, catch me in the hallway, and let's let's talk about it. <laughs>